Hey, it's Seth, and welcome back after a long while to Payday 3. The last time I made a Payday video, uh, we were basically dying of boredom and lack of content, but I am pleased to announce that more content has finally came. With Update 2 bringing us two free heists, as well as a new transporter skill line, we have truly been gaining traction ever since. And today, I'd like to talk about the most recent update which added the very first DLC chapter into the game. Syntax Error. Is it worth it? Well, let's get right into it. First off, let's talk about the lesser parts of this whole DLC. The guns as well as the tailor pack. The weapon pack includes three new guns, each that bring to the game a slightly different take on their type of weapon, as well as a new slew of combat challenges related to each weapon. The FIC-22 TLR is a nearly no-recoil marksman rifle that has the least stopping power of the three weapons in the DLC. The War 45 is a very ammo-efficient SMG that is now the most damaging SMG in the category. And finally, the FSA-12 gauge is the very first semi-automatic shotgun in the game, and it packs quite the punch too, and is definitely the strongest weapon of the three in this weapon pack. The customization of the weapons are about the same as other weaponry we have, sharing similar sights, grips, mags, etc. There isn't much special customization between these new weapons. Uh, they did, however, give us a new weapon charm and a sticker for use on weapons. As for performance and combat, like I've said before, the SMG and the shotgun are the most potent becoming a perfect addition to our weapon roster, with the FIC-22 marksman rifle being, as far as I can tell, a simple weapon perfect for stealth, but not really good for loud combat. The weapon pack comes in at $5.99, and is a very good addition, but the price is just a bit high for just three weapons. If you compare this to the very first gauge weapon pack, which came with both masks, three weapons, and new throwable grenades, as well as 10 new achievements, seven of which required the DLC to be owned, all for the low, low price, $5, or $4.99, at launch. This is not very worth it. Now, of course, this is a new game, and the way DLC seems to be sold will be different, but it is still funny to think this DLC is asking for a higher price for less than a half the content of the first weapon pack from Payday 2. It puts a slightly sour taste in the mouth of us consumers. But regardless, there has been many changes to weaponry and how it where all works in Payday. However, I still would like to see a change in just how much content we get in these packs, especially if this is the asking price for a simple weapon pack. Maybe weapon pack DLC should also include skins, or some kind of DLC themed pattern or color. Whatever the case, this weapon pack is very good, but maybe wait for a sale. Now, onto the tailor pack. In it comes four suits, four gloves, and four preset masks. This is mostly an opinionated pack. The suits look nice, and the gloves too, and of course, the masks are very funny. And I think the Poindexter mask is probably everyone's new favorite. But something that still is a bummer is that the masks cannot be changed in any way. There isn't new patterns or materials like how they did with Payday 2 DLCs, nor any personalization for the suits or gloves. Not to mention, if you get these DLCs, what's the chance of you actually using every single one of these suits, gloves, or masks? More than once. Again, it really comes down to you and how you feel about the visuals and the look of these clothing items. But just like with the weapon pack, the tailor pack comes in at an astonishingly high price of $4.99 or $5. For me, I literally only am using a single pair of gloves from this pack, meaning I really only got this whole thing for one piece of clothing. In this update, they added three new masks that can be customized and per personalized to your liking for free, which in all honesty is much better 
Now obviously, you don't get the cool flair of these preset masks, like how they have animated bits and pieces to them, but still, it doesn't seem fully worth it. I only recommend buying this tailor pack if you know that you will be enjoying the customizations you see in them, and the masks. Okay, now, on to the big one. The Heist. This heist is the first in the Year One Bad Apple storyline, and to me, I think it's a welcome addition to the heist roster we have. The heist sees you first infiltrating into the main data center of Scry Digital, hacking and making your way into the basement of the data center, where an AI with drones attempts to make your heist much more difficult. You must get servers, verify their data, and then proceed back up to the van to make your escape. In Loud, you make an explosive getaway through the park, where you fend off the NYPD and await your chopper. I played this heist multiple times, and I can say that this heist, while not very hard, is very fun to get through. Something I realized about this heist later on is that there is a secret lootable in the control room, requiring multiple people to press buttons. I do like that this heist has a secret, and I do hope they continue to make DLCs with secrets and secret loot you could possibly find or discover. The Heist Underground features a maze-like structure which can be quite difficult to find your bearings in if you are just seeing the heist for the first time, but the ventilation ducts provide a great way to completely avoid the maze-like halls, and honestly makes this heist extremely easy. The guards do not appear to be a big threat, even the lead guard poses hardly any threat, but again, that could just be for me. The payout for this DLC is 1.2 million on Overkill, and with how fast you can complete the heist and stealth, it's an easy way to make a quick buck. In general, I'd like to say this heist is a good mid-tier heist. Now that, I'm, now that I'm talking about that, I probably should make a tier list for heists. Anyway, another thing I'd like to mention is the absolutely wonderful soundtrack that Gustavo has made for this heist. It's a wonderful, upbeat tune that really matches the theme of the heist, and I can't wait to see more from Gustavo. Anyway, the heist comes in at a whopping price of $9.99. $10 for a single heist and nothing else. Now, I know it's not very good to compare this to the Payday 2's first heist DLC, or anything really Payday 2 related, because it's a different game, but just so you have an idea for just how much content was in Payday 2's first DLC, the Armored Transport heist came with new weapons, three of them, modifications, masks, patterns, and six heists. Now, obviously, five of those heists were duplicates, so just in a different location, but there was a whole train heist, which was so cool. It was an amazing first edition, all for $6.99. That is a major price difference. And to see this first DLC adding not even 10% of the amount of content of Payday 2's first DLC is just, well, to be honest, it's heartbreaking. Now, obviously, the developers have to make money somehow, and whether it's increasing the price of, of content, I at least would like to see a good ratio, like a money ratio to the content within the DLC. Because I do think that this isn't really worth it. Now, I am glad that they are at least allowed non-DLC owners to play the heist if a friend owns it, just like how they did with Payday 2. And to be honest, you should play the DLC like that, at least until a sale happens, or something like a bundle. I do think the season pass is worth it, but if you plan on buying all these heists and weapon packs individually, I definitely recommend you wait for a sale. These DLCs are not worth it. $10 is simply too much for too little. The base game costs $40, meaning if we divide this into eight heists, not including the legacy heists, that is $5 per heist, meaning the heist is worth two heists in one. But is it? I really don't think so. Wait for a sale. And hopefully, they change their pricing plan, or how DLC packs are sold from here on out. Hopefully, they can add more content into each of the DLCs. Now, last thing. The whole Chapter 1 Syntax Error DLC costs in total $17.99. $18. And if you want to save a little money, to some degree, then I would recommend buying the whole chapter instead of the DLC individually. But even then, 
I still don't think that price is worth it. Okay. Well, you've heard my thoughts and review of this first DLC. Not of the update, but of the DLC. I didn't talk about any of the changes or the new enemy or even the new skill line added with this update. But only because, technically, that all was free content, not related to this DLC. The new enemy, though, uh, the techie, is yet to come to other heists, and is only in the new DLC. So technically, at the moment, we have a DLC-specific enemy. It seems like a wonderful addition to the enemy roster, and I can't wait to see how it affects loud gameplay in future heists. Anyway, that is it. I hope you all have enjoyed this slight overview and review of the DLC. And I hope you have an answer you were looking for about the individual DLCs in Syntax Error. To be honest, the free content they've been adding has been so much better than this paid content. So, as long as they keep all this free content coming, I'll gladly pay for future content. I mean, I own the gold edition, but still, I, I would like to see some better content that is worth. Especially if they intend on making the game better in the long run. Love you all. Stay safe, know that you matter, and while things in this world will attempt to push you back, know that you have the ability to push back ten times harder. You can make it. Hope your day or night goes well, and I'll see you.